Let's show you how you can get a PDF document uploaded into your Copilot in Microsoft Copilot Studio right now. So Copilots have these things called a knowledge base and the knowledge base is how you can kind of tell Copilot the things that it needs to know. And there are all sorts of different types of knowledge base sources that you can do. You can do websites, you can do documents, you can do SharePoint folders, but in this video, we're going to talk about how you can upload PDFs to Microsoft Copilot Studio so then your Copilot can lean on the content within that PDF to generate its generative AI answers as opposed to just kind of leaning on the general, potentially the general internet, right? And so here I am within Microsoft Copilot Studio and here I have my coffee Copilot that does anything and everything related to coffee. Now, I have already previously built out a coffee FAQ. And so specifically, here is kind of my coffee FAQ and I have just some general, you know, coffee questions that people may have. This is the PDF that I am looking to upload within Microsoft Copilot Studio. So, here I am on my Copilot. If I select knowledge here, this knowledge tab, and then I select add knowledge source real quick, we can see that my, my Copilot already has one. It's a public website as a knowledge base, but I want to add a PDF. I, if I select add knowledge, here you will see upload files. Off screen, I have um, my file here. Let me drag and drop this PDF in here. Here's my coffee FAQ PDF. And I'm going to say that just give it a brief description. This is a list of commonly about coffee. There we go. Let me add this. And this may take a couple of seconds. And even after this, your file is going to kind of do some processing. But while this is happening, I want to maybe explain potentially a little maybe pro tip to make sure that your PDF is set up correctly. Now, I understand that you might not have complete control over the content within the PDF, but I just want to have a couple of call outs. So Copilot and generative AI and large language models are really smart. So I guess take this with a grain of salt, but generally if you have a couple of things there's a couple of things that could really hinder Copilot's ability to understand what's within the PDF. The first being, if this is like a 400 page PDF with a ton of text on it, then it's going to take a ton of time for the large language model to sift through what you're looking for and give you an answer. Now, you know, obviously the technology is getting better and better and better, but nonetheless, people probably don't want to sit and wait for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, two minutes, for a simple answer to their question about coffee, right? So just be aware, like it is really powerful, but there there might be a, a reason to maybe break out the PDF into multiple different PDFs. And, and I, I'm gonna show you not necessarily how to do that, but how you can build your co-pilot in a way that will um, help boost performance. But another thing that's really interesting is you'll see that I actually, you know, I have the text itself within this PDF. Something that I, I think that might be fairly common in you know making sure you want to avoid is making sure your PDF is not full of screenshots. For example, you may have, you know, from my perspective, it might just have the text on the screen, but if all of your texts are actually within photos on a PDF, Copilot will potentially have a really hard time understanding, you know, the content or the language because it it is just seeing photos, if that makes sense. And photos are harder to process than just general language. So make sure that your PDF is actually using text. Um, not saying your PDF can't have photos, but the text and the content of your PDF is not within a photo, but is actual text within the PDF. I, I hope I hope that makes sense. Finally, as well, I would highly recommend setting up the headings of the content correctly. And almost kind of like if you're familiar with search engine optimization, you know, setting it up in a way where this is a considered a title and not just like, you know, 
this is bigger and bolder, but that it actually kind of uses the title um, code. This uses, you know, a heading one, this is a heading one, and then all of these are heading twos. These are gonna help Copilot sift through, you know, where things are and how every all the content within this document relate to each other. So also potentially setting those up. Let me go back here. So it has been added and is currently in progress. One last couple of couple of notes here while this is happening. If you feel like you have extra questions that I am not answering in this video, be sure to follow the first link down in the description down below to get in direct contact with me so that I can help coach you. Now, I am super passionate about learning new things regarding Microsoft Copilot Studio and I want to learn from you and I want to help you learn as you are tinkering around and building Copilots and adding PDFs to your Copilot. So be sure to follow the first link if you feel like you would like some extra help with me and get in direct contact with me via email. Okay, while this is still in progress, I want to go ahead and start building out our topic. So this is not a topic deep dive, but we now need to tell our copilot when it needs to look at that PDF document, right? Right now, it's just kind of added to the, the knowledge base. But what we want to do is actually create a new FAQ topic for our copilot. And the reason is topics are going to kind of be the way that um, your copilot is segmented out. And so, what do I mean by that? I mean, your copilot likely or your agent likely serves several different purposes. Maybe it wants to do, you know, there's an FAQ section, maybe the, it, we need it to do some sort of action or automation, and maybe we need it to pull some information from our database. And those are kind of the three main purposes of this agent. You will probably want to have this agent be in have three different topics for these different things. And so here, I want to start making kind of an FAQ topic that is going to be followed whenever somebody just has a general question. I hope that makes sense. So here I have created a new topic. I'm going to just call this coffee FAQ. And all topics have a trigger and you can actually lean on generative AI to tell Copilot when it should trigger this topic. And I'm just going to say, um, Topic is used for when user or when a coffee related question is asked. I don't know, maybe maybe something like that. To fix my typo there, typo there. So now I've described what this topic does. Copilot is going to be able to kind of understand. Okay, when someone asks a general question about coffee, it's going to know. Okay, I need to go to my coffee FAQ topic, right? As opposed to other parts of the Copilot. Now. How do I actually get it to read my PDF document? So if I go ahead and select add node here, underneath advanced, you will see generative answers. Let me go ahead and select that. Now, there's kind of two main things about this generative answer node that we need to set up. And the first one being the input. So what this means, what the generative answer node is, is I'm gonna come back to, come back to my camera here. Hey, what's going on? Let's, let's chat. What the generative answer node is, is this is saying, hey, at this point in time, in the, in the process, in the topic, go work your generative AI magic and come back with an answer. What this input is, is the actual thing that you are passing to the generative AI model to work its magic with. And so what we wanted to work its magic with is the, the message that was sent to Copilot, right? If I asked a question of, hey, um, I want to know, and the example we'll use is, I want to know why does coffee sometimes taste sour? We want to pass that, that message, why does coffee sometimes taste sour, into this generative answer node so it can then work its magic and go find its information and search the PDF with that message. So how do we do that? We do that by, see this input here, you're gonna need to select a value or a variable. And if you have any custom variables, you will see those here. But you'll notice there are these things called system variables. 
Not to get too much in the weeds, there is a video, I'll see if I remember to link it up here on the diff how to create variables and different things and what system variables are. But these are kind of pre-created variables that every copilot, every agent has. And what we are looking for is the activity.text variable. This variable is the person's last message. And so if I select that, that's going to then put the person's last message, whatever it was, and go work its magic with the generative answer or with the generative AI capabilities. Now you'll see here we have data sources and right, we did just add a PDF to our knowledge base. And now it will be generally included in this by default. But I wanted to show you that you can actually have selected sources specifically. So if I check this, you will see that I have my URL about coffee and I have my coffee FAQ. So let's say for example, you have certain knowledge sources related to your copilot. Going back to that content, that topic of topics and how your copilot could do different things. Say in this scenario, we only wanted it to use a select few of the um, knowledge sources. And in our scenario, let's say we just want it to use the coffee FAQ. So I can check that as I need. Be sure to check out, you know, maybe some of the other settings. If you want to change kind of the prompt or how it will respond or what, what would might be considered the content moderation level, um, you can add in prompts here that are you know, generative AI friendly to help tell it how it should respond. This latency message is actually pretty cool. So say for example, I do wanna explain this before I guess I, I move on to the advanced. What this is, is this is a message that Copilot will send once it first, once the generative answer node is first initially triggered. So for example, let me see, let me look into this. So let's, I'm, I'm trying to think of the user experience. I'm gonna say, hey, why does coffee sometimes taste sour? What this latency message says is once this is, once you know it gets to this create generative answer node, it says it sends that message instantly. And so then it, while it's searching and finding its answer, from my perspective, I know at least it's going, the, you know, the copilot is working. It's not just like stalling or frozen. It's saying, hey, give me just a second. I'm gonna find this out. Let's see, let's go ahead and add that and, and have that work for us as well. So here I have my topic set up. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And I guess while this is saving, shameless plug to like and subscribe the video, uh, like and subscribe to the channel. I also just wanna say that you should totally come and hang out and join me every Wednesday on the Power Talks series, conversation, podcast, whatever whatever we want to call it. I just, I just come on there and talk with other experts in the space about things like Microsoft Copilot Studio, the Power Platform, Microsoft Dynamics, career development, soft skills. If that sort of stuff is interesting to you, be sure to subscribe. They are on this channel. You don't have to go anywhere. It makes it really simple for you. Okay, continuing on, our Copilot is done. Let me just refresh here. And I'm gonna ask my question, why does coffee sometimes taste sour? And even though I have a typo, I guess that's a, a good example. Here we can see my latency message. Let me look into this. This will take just a moment, right, um, that I had set. And then here we have the response from the Generative AI FAQ PDF. And we can see that when I click on this message, it is coming from this generative answer node that we just set up. And just so I can promise you that it's being read from this, the final question on here is why does coffee taste sour? And you can see it talks about under extraction, the temperature of the water, under brewing, and too coarse of a grind. Now let's go ahead and read the message. We see it's from under extraction, possible causes include water too cool, under brewing, you're using course of, too coarse of a grind, right? That is where it's getting that content. The PDF is now being read and understood by Copilot. I hope that makes sense. I hope you don't have any questions, but if you do, be sure to let them let me know down in the comments down below. Now, if you are, have built a Copilot and are wanting to start getting feedback from the people interacting with your Copilot and using it, you're gonna wanna check out this video here to see how you can do that. 
My name is Griffin Lickfeld. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.